Alrighty, y'all. Uh, we're gonna be starting in just a bit. A little confused. Why you all can't hear the game? Cool, love it. Hold on. Cause it's quiet. Sorry in advance. I'm trying to figure something out. Cause I know y'all can see it. I can see that y'all can see it. But it says it's not picking up volume. I don't know if anyone can check and tell me if you can hear like a little bit of music in the background, like the. If I hit play on this, y'all hear any of that? Can y'all hear the pings and stuff? Can anyone tell me? Hello? Please chat. I need to know if you can hear the game. Well, while I'm waiting on chat to tell me whether you can hear the game at all, um, it looks like Lafayette will be uh, on the red side in game one. Ash gets a ward down here and the other four members of Lafayette go this way to drop a ward. We have Lilia top. Um, filling in for the top lane, we have Hydro Waver Mary making her first game debut of the season. Um, so that's pretty exciting. This is the last game of the right. Yes, we can hear. Cool. Thank you. Uh, this is the last game of the regular season. Um, so Lafayette definitely. Whoa, look at these icons. Oh, pff, I'm so silly. I was about to be like, whoa, why are there two more? Nico, Nico can turn into or look like other characters. She can't use their abilities or anything, but she can look like them, right? Uh, that threw me off. See, she just turned to Daggerum, who is actually down here, right? She's Zillion. <laughs> you know, this Nico enjoying uh, uh, the interactions here. So we have Mordekaiser versus Lilia in the top lane. We have uh, Burst Mage versus Utility Mage in the mid lane. We have very interesting bot lane. You know, you have a hyper carry and Twitch and if Twitch can get to three items that can do quite a bit, but against a Braum, your life is very hard um, to to get that damage across. If, if Braum can shield, uh, put the shield up towards that damage, life life just feels hard with that sort of a thing. Lilia does have a small push here against the Mordekaiser. I'm curious if we'll see any sort of aggression around it. And I do like 
what I'm seeing already there in the top lane. Mid lane is probably going to be pretty boring unless someone can just catch the other. Um, good respect for the level two. Takes a little bit of poke, but nothing major. Maybe we'll see something on the bot lane because right now the junglers are both full clearing uh, from one side of the map to the other. Trundle going to be beating the Hecarim actually here. Hecarim, are you going to finish? Yep, okay. Hecarim is going to finish the Raptors. I'm curious if Trundle's going to look for an early gank. We do see a sweep of this ward. And he's not even going to go for the ward. We do have a miss. Flash already used. First blood does go to Trundle. Bot lane definitely getting a little intense. Some good damage coming out there. All right. Seraphine thought about basing there. Probably doesn't have the greatest back. And since ne Nico doesn't have uh, teleport, does not have to worry about um, anyone coming back. Unfortunate to miss those. Uh, sorry for showing that. All right. So now that if we looking here in the bot lane, just really not much happening. Um, I imagine we could see quite a bit of aggression if some CC hits. Twitch is actually already out of mana and we have a little bit going. Twitch is that's a really good flash by the Twitch because I do think Twitch dies there if he stays. All right. Ekron takes the top side scuttle and sweeps this out. This makes sense considering uh, Trundle did path towards mid to get that first blood and another ward was placed here on oh, wait That's the same word from earlier. Just not cleared out. Ekram looked but decides better against it makes sense and You can see Trundle knew what was happening because Trundle hovered uh, Pretty quickly on that. So now Ekram with nothing else to do probably going to take the bottom side scuttle and then maybe even repeat full clear not exactly sure life getting a little hard for the twitch here in the bottom lane so um all things considered i not sure i feel about the the hecarim pick i like that he can get onto the back line um but i do think your life is a little bit hard against a trundle who can slow you and i mean we see the trundle just uh doing things here in the top lane getting a lot of early ganks off And I like that they're helping shove this out. I see a lot of junglers will gank and then just leave. And uh, it's better just shove this out because uh, Mordekaiser is always going to TP and you don't want to put your low health Lily against the full health Mordekaiser. Even if you did just get the kill, you haven't spent for it. So you don't uh, actually have anything there. Mordekaiser missing a couple CS, but that's fine. We all do. Every single one of us. Nico struggling to land any sort of catch and poke. If this this lane changes quite a bit if she can land that. But Seraphine doing a good job to dodge and play out this landing phase. As soon as Seraphine actually gets to uh lost chapter, so probably is getting pretty close to the gold for it. Um you see a very easy lane phase for Seraphine against most every champ because of the way that she can just wave clear. Uh, really easy. <sighs> There's not a lot to talk about right now. There's not a whole lot of action. Trundle is moving around this map really well, though. While Hecarim is trying to full clear, uh, Trundle is trying to increase the pace of the game and put that Hecarim on a clock so that he doesn't feel like he can just scale uh, into whatever it is he wants to do. Right, Mordekaiser. That's not Mordekaiser. That's Nico. I did it again. I should know this. Looks like they want to contest. We're gonna have a fight here. And I think Trundle wants this fight for sure. And this is a quick rotation for Lafayette. No, more good jukes out of the Seraphine. This should be another kill. Nico doesn't have flash. There's a really good rotation by the bot lane for Lafayette and the mid lane for Lafayette to cover this dragon take and like i said the trundle is really looking to accelerate the pace of this game and not just let the hecarim free farm um because if he matches farm for farm hecarim is going to be more useful uh because he's going to be stronger uh hey top lane not much action perfectly all right lilia should be pretty fine with that i mean so sometimes you see lilias just get really aggro with the ways in which they harass but 
Um, there's definitely no need to. Because going for the ult. Should be able to just get the... Nope, not the kill there. Flash comes out of Trundle. Definitely some aggression there. I'm curious. I saw... Nope, I saw a help ping, but nothing came of it, so... Wasn't sure. I like that they're they're playing aggro here, forcing the zillion to uh, use bombs here. Which is um, not having fun in this bot lane. Let's just put it. Let's just put it that way. Oh, Nico finally landed some of that poke, and we could see how much damage that is. And if Nico can land that several more times. It can feel. Pretty hard to play against, but now Seraphine's gonna land some poke back of her own. Easier to land, honestly. Like Seraphine's just easier to play champ in some ways. Akram's looking though. He wants to go for this, and he's going to make his play mid. Here it is. Seraphine does still have flash. If that had connected by Nico, I think that would be a kill. It still might be a kill. That was an aggressive flash by Seraphine. I think she's gonna die for it. Yep. You know. Is what it is. I'm curious if they'll actually base or if they'll want to fight. Looks like they took the actual base there. They could have fought while Zillion was not level six yet, but maybe they're feeling like Zillion should be hitting six soon. He's actually only a little past halfway, but had they chosen to fight, uh, it would have been all right. Yeah, but now we're getting to the Seraphine wave clear that I was talking about where it just any sort of lane phase if she had trouble, which she didn't. But if she had, her life's just incredibly easy. Um, with that kind of wave clear, which is broken, by the way. Like I, I will fully admit that that's, that's absurd. Wave clear there. All right, Lafayette with a comfortable uh, close to 2,000, about, you know, 1.8 thousand gold lead here against Harrison County Law 1. Uh, for those wondering why it's Harrison County Law 1, they do have a second team. Um, we used to have multiple teams, but it's been a while. And Seraphine without Flash is a really uh, important timer to try to abuse. Um, and it looks like they just could not get it. Ash with the downtown ult. Curious if they'll try to like for any place. Seraphine might go down here. But with the shields and with the peel, it feels really hard the game nico might be able to get out of this they don't know where she went they're looking she almost based on that ward and now we'll see ash come up what a good flash play from the zillion incredible play from zillion just then trundle not gonna peel for brom the seraphine will so we've got a fight on two fronts Trundle got to keep running this down. Seraphine and Braum going to try to take on Nico. All right, this is getting a little crazy, but here comes Hecarim. Hecarim might be able to clean this up if he could just get one reset on this kill. But he does not have... Oh, there's one. Oh, man, if he... I actually think that... Uh, <laughs> wow. I think that if... Um... Hecker would have been able to get his helicopter spin going a little bit faster than he might have been able to pull off. Uh, definitely the double, if not a triple. And now you see the, the pings coming out in the chat saying uh, Trundle already has a 700 gold bounty. And this is what I meant by Trundle is going to be looking to accelerate the pace of this game as fast as possible. Trundle now 9, 0, and 1 in this game. 9 of the 10 kills for Lafayette in his pocket. The other one for Mina there in the mid laner. Not much else to say, honestly. Like, uh, it's not been. I don't know. Not too many things happen. I do like that Mordecai is looking to push for this and start it. Um, you know, trying to be useful on the map. Top lane sometimes feels hard to be useful. So, you know, pushes and then looks to do an objective. Lily trying to be safe up here. This should go the way of Harrison County. Lafayette does not even know that that's happening. 
Now, obviously, they do. Curious if we'll see any aggression here in the top lane or in the bot lane. Um, this might be an opportunity, and there's the Drowsy. And Lilia doesn't keep going in. Flash out of Mordekaiser. And Mordekaiser is going to ult him, but there's nothing really to do. So that's an ult down for Mordekaiser. And now it looks like they're going to want to try to dive. Nico should try to head up here. But now Nico sees an opportunity to go for it herself. And that was really close to being a play. But no, Trundle, instead of going for the dive top, is already moving down here to the mid lane. Great flash by Seraphine. This should be a kill. Nope. I mean, that, 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 that is getting absurd right now. 11 0 and 1 on the Trundle. When Killiquary asked me what he should play and I said Trundle, he wasn't super enthused, but I will say looks like he uh, he might be a believer now in the Trundle. Zillion with full mana is, is kind of interesting. You'd think he would have um, tried to spam more or something. I'm not exactly sure what he could do. Uh, Trundle's going to be able to get the dragon on this half of the map now. Not a whole lot of turret pressure with everything happening on the map. Kills and all. Uh, Lafayette with a comfortable uh, almost 5,000 gold lead. Uh, there's really not a lot of mm, map pressure yet. Obviously, two drakes to none is important. Nico heading up here for the top lane. Maybe looking to fight now. Mordekaiser does not have ult. It is going to be Nico and Mord together. Flash out. But Lily is just too fast. Nico wastes her ult. And that's huge. Waste their time. 2022. All right, not much else to say. Kind of just chilling now. There's not gonna be another Rift Herald for a while. There's not gonna be another Drake for almost four minutes. Well, yeah, did get quite a bit of damage on that. Hecarim ult, but missed. But even if that hit, I'm not sure it actually would have done what he wanted it to do. And so uh, there's nothing, no play there. And here comes Trundle to make his play mid. A really good run by Zillion. Honestly, like every time I've seen the Zillion, it is, looks like he's just doing things, man. Um, so shout out to Zillion, man. Making everyone's life hard. I wonder if the bot lane will try to dive. Mm, not sure, I guess. Ekram looking for a play here in the bot lane. And Twitch probably looking to follow it up. And Hecarim goes, pulls the trigger. Oh my goodness. I'm not sure what I just watched. Um, Rom's shield definitely didn't go quite the direction you want it to, but I'm not sure it really matters. Trish just doesn't have any damage. Double kill for the Ash while Zillion was making his plays mid. And this tower is still going to go down to the Seraphine, even though Nico. Oh, just barely can't make the play. And Metro Mia has slain Neko Fox. All right, let's take stock of where we are. Trundle 11, 0, and 1. Seraphine 2, 1, and 6. Ash 2, 1, and 4. Um, bot and top, or support and top have both only given assist. I mean, this scoreline's about right for top lane in this game. There hasn't been a lot of action on this half of the map. Most of the game has been played towards the bot half of the map. We see Zillion chunked down and having to base. Uh, so this decent timer is an opportunity for bot lane to try to attack this Twitch while Zillion is resetting on the map. Um, it's not going to be a large timer. 
Um, it'll have to be close to instant when they get back. Just try to pick a fight with this Twitch while you have this desync timer. And honestly, even if Zillion was running straight bot, you'd have this opportunity. But it looks like Zillion's not going to run top. He's going to run mid. The first tower down, though, Lafayette sit him pretty good. Now, honestly, I think if you're Ash, you just throw out ults, right? Like, is who's going to stop you? Um, maybe he wants to wait for team. Sick. Well, Brahms takes the kill with the key poke. Um, could have probably just if he wanted an assist, press W to someone and given them resists. But, you know, it is what it is. And we see a decently greedy play here um trundle all alone but trundle just putting in so much damage here zillion good ult uh but seraphine post trundle just looks so broken honestly like the way that they just go in and out and zillion with no ult should be able to oh my gosh trundle barely living there diving the tier two turret triple kill for the trundle um, this game's getting really far away from uh, any semblance of normal. 10,000 gold lead at 18 minutes is not something you want. And and as you can see in the chat, Nico is just spamming that Trundle bounty, knowing that this game has gotten away from them, knowing that Killiquaria has taken over. And now he's looking to hunt through all the camps here and the bot lane. Shut down for the Twitch, though. That is nice to have. Let's see if he's going to go for a second. Braum does not have a bounty to take, but... Obviously, gold is gold. Now, Seraphine could be in trouble. Yep, Seraphine could be in trouble. Seraphine is dead. That's a little greedy from Seraphine to go for that tower. Uh, but map pressure is map pressure. And honestly, like it does look like uh, neither Nico nor Zillion will get here in time to make a play. And Hecarim is on the wrong half of the map. It looks like he wants to go for Dragon. Um, I think if you're Trundle... Either A, you want to use this Herald to open up top, or B, you're wanting to use it to really, like, push the pace of this game. I personally, this far ahead, would be looking to pressure Baron, and then using Baron and Herald. You don't really get those opportunities very often, so, like, the more standard play would be to use uh, Herald to create pressure while you do uh, something on, either on the other half of the map, or just, you know, something else, right? Uh, this could be bad, though. Ash is going to be CC chained. And should die for this. But they use so much for the Ash that I'm curious if they have anything else. Seraphine ult does only hit Mordekaiser. Braum will not die. Trundle will not die. Lily is here to make a play. Zillion ult is down. Twitch is down. Nico's down. I'm not sure you have the damage for Baron right here with what you've got alive. Um, it would be a very long Baron if you were to try to take it. So it looks like they're making the smarter play and just shoving in mid. Maybe even going to drop the Herald. And Lilia tanking the turret. That's really unfortunate. Probably uh, Leandres or something like that. I'm not sure you had to drop the Herald for this, but that's fine. You know, it is what it is. All right, this could definitely get interesting. Legendary for the Trundle there. Um, let's see if they go for... There's one turret down. And Heresy County Law is struggling to destroy this Herald. And both towers are down. You can end the game if you don't end it. Uh, with that shutdown, though, and with uh, Mordekaiser respawning... That should also be Ash dead. You cannot end this game anymore. This game could have been over right then and there, but Trundle uh, going a little too ham on that play definitely makes a little bit of a mistake there. Um, it happens. We've all been a little greedy, but as long as you end the game cleanly, it should be fine. Huge shutdown over to uh, someone on the enemy team. I don't actually know who got that kill uh, credit, but a thousand gold to them for claiming the bounty. All right. And most of Lafayette resetting on the map. Lilia trying to secure the scuttle here on the top half. 
This could get dangerous as Harrison County Law is looking to make a play. Warriors of Kaiser are not quick on the trigger. Probably could have just ulted the Lilia and tried to fight. Good Ash ult. This is a nice choke point. You would want a Seraphine here, but Seraphine is not here yet. In comes Brahma Seraphine though. Lily on the back half is going to die, but it should mean the rest of the team is wiped and Lafayette could just run it down mid lane. They do not need the Baron. The game, the Nexus is exposed. The game is over. And at this point, the GGs are coming up. Uh, well, they haven't yet, but they should be. Blue is pinging Baron as if they would go for that. Um, you know, maybe in a solo queue game, but in this uh, Lafayette knows the game is over. The, ba the base is broken. Um, and so they can just march it down mid lane and hit the Nexus and that is going to be the end of game one a decisive victory for Lafayette against Harrison County law one um, Really well played out um, Great team fighting huge by the trundle just accelerate this game beyond repair because I liked what Harrison County law drafted It's just they could never actually get off the ground with the way trundle was just controlling The early game creative pathing into the first blood and accelerating the pace of this game way too fast for the other team to catch up so um normally i would take a break between games but i i need to hop it straight into game two so that's what i'm gonna do oh, my cat say it's hello so okay get rid of time controls put up objective timers there we go um Looks like looks like Lafayette enjoying the um, the ping system a little bit. Not really exactly sure what's going on there, but both teams off to the races to their respective positions. It looks like Lafayette's going to bid as five. That's that's interesting. I'm curious how they're going to do it. What they're looking for here on the top side of the map. They always keep it creative. They never go the exact same ways. So, you know, for people who try to scout, not really sure what to say. Um, <laughs> Don't think it would be a great idea to just be like they always do this because as they've shown they don't always do anything and this could be first blood mundo is caught out let's see if anyone reacts quick enough i mean honestly i think mundo's fine there's not enough hard cc here ow cat ow okay udi is actually pretty low but flash out from the heimerdinger is pretty disastrous and heal down for zyra okay uh hold on Sorry, my cat was like digging into me and I don't have like a hoodie on. I have like a thin t-shirt, um, you know, so that hurt. Normally she likes to cuddle and like need, you know, like how cats sometimes need on people. And uh, yeah, that was painful. Anyway. All right, so uh, Lafayette currently. All right, let's talk about the comms actually. So Lafayette now the one with the zillion. Uh, here in the mid lane, Metro Mina playing the Zillion. Uh, in the bot lane, we have uh, Nilo Yumi. So we have technically two enchanters, right? You have, uh, if you consider Zillion an enchanter, he's a utility mage, right? Just like uh, Seraphine in a lot of ways. Uh, in the bot lane, we have, you can consider this as double enchanter. Now, this is not an easy lane to play in as Nilo Yumi. Uh, not at all. With a Zyra, that sounds like hell, actually, to go into. Because you're going to have the plants making your life really, really hard. Um, so, you know, that's a thing, but I mean, a lot of that poke that might come out will be negated in respect for, um, uh, the Yumi heals and the Neela passive. Uh, for those who don't know, <laughs> Neela's passive is insane. She has several, right? So let's just look at this for those that don't know. When she gain, when she kills a minion, her nearest ally gets 50 experience that they lost, right? So in a dual lane, you're going to see them actually out level uh, at all stages, even if they die and miss 6p. They'll just out level uh, due to experience the opposing lane. So they should be hitting three relatively soon. Yep. Olaf trying to make a short uh, early gank down here. This will be smart. Not sure that they can get out of this. Good cleanse. You try to run. 
no flash down from the Nila is really important. And because of that time wasted, Olaf no longer has a skill of weight. So this seems like a really end play. Um, good restraint by Udyr to not keep going. Already used flash. I've seen plenty of junglers just continue in there. Uh, die one for one and that's not worth it for your team. Your teammates are not going to be happy about that. Um, in the top lane, we have Shen, another utility champ. So a lot of this game is based around Nila, Udyr going forward and the utility of Yumi, Nila passive and Shen. Oh, we didn't talk about the other part of Nila's passive. Sorry, we got to go back. So every time she's basically that second paragraph is saying every time she is healed, her ally gets healed. Every time her ally gets healed, she gets healed. And same with shields. Every time their shield, she gets a little. And every time she gets a shield, they get a little. So you can imagine when champs like Yumi heal and shield as often as they do, there's just a lot of uh, craziness that can happen with that it's just it's, it's absurd right like I, I don't i don't know what else to say it's just absurd so you know there's that um all right olaf looking for a play here in the top lane olaf has the wraparound on this shin does not know yet and shin's trying to crash this wave pretty desperately but now he's going to be ganked and that's good reaction time a little late on the e first blood for the nila Nice flash by the Shin. We'll see if Neela goes back in. A lot of action happening on lots of sides. Oh my goodness. High reading are almost killing the Zillion. Just not quite able to get it. Now High Redinger out of mana. Nothing to do. High Redinger did ignite the Udyr. And I'm not exactly sure without mana what you could realistically do there. Um, both mid laners would have hit six right here. So that was a really important opportunity for the i would to try to go for hold on i got paused really quick i'm sorry i just realized something uh all right we good now you're all swap i'll be be back we back we back okay because now that zillion does level six zillion as you saw in the last game can bring back if someone dies basically what when zillion ults them uh after a couple seconds so let's see it's it's like um for five seconds they're protected if they die within those five seconds they'll be brought back to life with a significant amount of health um and you can see the amount of healing there in the bottom so zillion going to be pretty chill now in this lane definitely not a fun lane you just be constantly harassed by Zillion or by Heimer. Goodness, that's actually a lot of damage that uh, Zillion just took just to auto those. I don't think it's worth it uh, to auto them like that and take all that damage. But alas, all right, Udi are trying to make a play here in the bot lane. Did not quite work without the wave, um, except shit, or Ash and Zyra now are both incredibly low. Ash did not use exhaust. All right, Udi looking for the play on the Olaf. Oh my goodness. Barely living and barely shielding. I think that's a tilter. You know what I mean? Like that's one of those moments where like if it goes your way, it feels really, really good. And if it doesn't, it feels really, really bad. Uh, like that. I mean, they still got the kills, but Heimerdinger getting the shutdown is annoying. But I mean, you're up by now 3000 gold as a team. So, I mean, it is what it is, right? Um, maybe not the best, but also, uh, nothing to be upset about. Any of the play that may, that Lafayette made over the course of this was definitely more worth. So Lafayette, uh, for those who don't know, are again on the red side. I've already said that, but just to be sure, uh, because some of the champs played now by Lafayette are similar to ones that were played in the last game, like the Zillion. That's not the enemy team. It's Mina playing a champion that she enjoys. Um. <sighs> so. If you look here. Nila. 
I'm trying to click. It's about to hit six. Meanwhile, Ash is only barely into her level five. It's gonna be a while for her to hit six. So this is a nice window of opportunity that Neela can to just go all in. It looks like they're gonna do it. And yeah, that's absurd, right? Like you just. Mm, yep. Okay. Yep. Just absurd. Period. Is sorry. Right. That's a small window of opportunity there, right? Like that was not something that like you could just go for whenever. That was something that uh, while they were six and they were five, they felt like they can go for. All right, Udir on the top half of the map, one v two gets away. That's like uh, you know what some people don't realize like uh, winning doesn't always look the same. That one v two play right there to run be able to run away chill. To me, is winning because he got what he came for and left unscathed at all. Like. Didn't blow subs, didn't have to do anything, right? Like he just got what he wanted and left. Uh, so many people I know would consider the only thing they consider winning is killing. That's all they consider winning, as opposed to yeah, triumph. By the way, triumph value in that one fight down here was uh was funny for sure. All right, Zillion learning uh her lesson from earlier. Just kidding. Did not learn the lesson, still autoing the, the turrets and taking a lot of damage for it. Uh Not sure about the shinnel. Maybe he tried to use it to get away. That had to have been it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that had to have been it. It's fine. You know, like I was very confused for a second. Um, you know, fire <laughs> was definitely an interesting play. Honestly, though, even though Zillion's getting chunked here, Zillion is not actually that low. Zillion has ult, so Zillion is just chilling. That's probably the most annoying thing about playing against Zillion, as long as they have good resource management. I mean, I don't have much else to say. Udi are doing the dragon on award, but I'm not sure anyone is in a position to do anything about it. Olaf is only just now resetting on the map, so the best you can hope for is a steal by the Ash or the Zyra. Udi does have smite though, so it shouldn't be stolen. Ever. And Ash ults for that. I don't think that's worth it. I think Neela, Neela just kills him. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, bot lane is feeling a little doomed. Zillion is still just chilling and being annoying. Not sure I feel about this. Maybe if you put that ult over here, Zillion misses XP for both of those, but uh, whatever. Fight the bot lane. Olaf trying to do something. Cannot auto the Neela because of Neela's W, another broken ability. How many broken abilities does Neela have? The answer is yes. I hate this bot lane. And I hope. All the teams we play also hate it because, you know, yeah. Neela has no mana to continue here. So yeah, Udyr has to be the one to take. Udyr's going to die. Just kidding. Just kidding. I, I don't know what else to say. It looked like Udyr tanked so long. Both top players flashy way game of who could play chicken and both failed <laughs> You know, whatever it happens. We've all been there All right, and now we're starting to see Yumi, Neela and Udi are being pinged for their bounties um, That's a feel-good moment for a lot yet, but uh, honestly uh, What I would really like to see is how they're going to put their foot on the gas because um with this particular comp, you are low ranged. Neela does not have long range autos. Zillion's not really known for his siege. So, so much of this game is predicated on being stronger than the enemy and being able to get Baron. The Ashal just barely misses. Shin's not going to die here. And Olaf walks away with a bomb on his head because of the Zillion. Udir does not 
have anything else. So Jubes has slain Thunderbolt 396. A thousand is unstoppable. Yeah, this looks this looks uh kind of crazy there on the bot lane for sure. And Heimerdinger gonna walk away to die. That's like the worst feeling in the world, by the way, when you have that bomb in your head and you know there's nothing you could do. That's probably the most demoralizing moment in the game. Um this is one way to siege and take towers, right? Kill people. Um, so I, uh, you know, La Lafayette winning this game, but I am curious when you think about this sort of a comp, how low range it is, and um, how if maybe Heimerdinger was stronger if Zyra was doing better, how their comp could do stuff. So it's not like I did, don't like the comp here from them. It's just that like, you know, Lafayette is definitely very comfortable with the champs they have it's very clear that they are confident in on these particular characters and olaf not sure if he tried to ward or what there that was really weird really just gonna go in The bomb was on Neela, and then um, she walked it to him. All right, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to say. Uh, this is gonna go, keep walking down though. No one took this down, and so there's the Herald charge, huge chunk of damage onto the mid lane turret, but not enough to really matter. Lafayette of, of almost eleven thousand gold here, eleven thousand gold here, at the fifteen minute mark. Uh, gotta be feeling pretty good about the state of the game um, but again I, I do have a small concern if they can't force a fight around objectives how do you siege and they have to win those fights around the objectives too Shin not able to pull the sword through and get as much damage there is some good damage from the Shin uh, but not an easy matchup at all alright new lane assignments Nila just running down mid. Uh, I think Nila's dead here. No, broken Nila healing. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Love it. Nila, 10, 1, and 5. Nila is just running this game. Rampage for Metro Mina now. 4, 0, and 3. Um... And while jungle doesn't have the absurd number of kills that jungle had in the last game I would say this is probably a better just a better game uh, Overall From more members of Lafayette Because you don't ever want to just see one person try to carry anything because if they can't then they feel like it's all on them um, Never punish you Oh my god, okay. Yep, he'd taken over This is getting to that point. For sure. I like that Lafayette is prioritizing the Herald over anything else. Because if you're trying to think, how do we end this game? How do we siege? Well, first of all, how do you siege? Um, if this was a more even game, um, it would be very hard without Herald, Baron, those kinds of things. Um, they don't need to care about the dragon. In fact, they should probably just base and let dragon go and be looking to siege. Uh, because the dragon doesn't realistically matter if you're thinking we're ending the game in the next Five six minutes. You're not thinking to yourself. Oh my gosh We got to get this dragon because until one team has four it doesn't really matter They ran down here, but like I really would have preferred they just base Whatever they really want to fight All right, will Udyr finally die? Nope zillion ult Ash is dead here, by the way. Cool. Uh, the one thing I don't like is that Lafayette hasn't really reset. You have 2,000 gold in the pocket of Neela. You have 2,000 gold almost uh, for Zillian. You have 2,500 for Udyr. Uh, you have 1,200 for Yumi. Like, realistically, it doesn't make sense that we haven't reset here.
there's not actually pressure here to do anything um so that's the important thing to keep in mind like it's not like lafayette has to siege here but they are choosing right here and now as their moment to siege i don't know how i feel about it um shin does have ult though zillion has ult uh you neither Numi nor neela have ult so that's not good but like whatever you're really far ahead oh there we go and this is why i said it didn't matter that the dragon was dead um okay this is this has to be i uh, in my opinion this is will's best game uh shit did not ult <laughs> he's not saving you dear uh all right neela you're out of health and mana yeah, i think you just reset right all right well had shin ulted onto the udir maybe he lives but honestly he's looked a little in it lafayette now up sixteen thousand gold it's kind of brutal um I, I don't have much else to say uh they really hit the accelerator on this game with the way that they moved around the map and where they pressured the towers um Harrison Kenny Law has not been able to get their feet under them to take any sort of tower. Um, the only objective they have is the dragon. And since they prioritize that, they actually just so far behind in gold. Um, they have that stat. They have, you know, if this if they if they had the wave clear to stall out this game, that could end up mattering, but it doesn't look like they have crazy wave clear, you know? Uh, and they can't live through this damage, right? Like the only people who could clear would be Heimerdinger. And I'm gonna just erase before I can even like move the screen to it. Um, I don't know. You know what? I wonder. There's a new item called Navori. I wonder it, how much Neela would benefit from it. I actually don't know. If they would consider her cleave to be an ability or still just only her auto. I don't know. Uh, so much I want to play around with in practice tool tonight. Uh, personally. Okay, this, this looks a little insane. That's GG. All right. Um, it's been a good night. Um, it's been a good week for Lafayette. Uh, the week's not over yet. Um, but for the League of Legends team, it is. This was the last game of the regular season. Um, we're going into the playoffs as the second best team in the state. Um, and I'm really curious how we're going to keep improving. Uh, and see if we can challenge for that first place spot again. We, you know, we pride ourselves on being good, uh, but this is a very young team. Um, it, it it looked like we were a bunch of veterans tonight, but actually the, the main variant veterans do set the pace of the game. And it was really good seeing uh, Will be the one to benefit from this. Uh, he was the one who played the Neela tonight um, in this game. Uh, and, and it really looked like... Uh, like a really well coordinated game in that game so uh shout out to harrison county i'm you know they had a good season uh they'll do well in the playoffs uh, but we're, we're looking ahead to to henry clay kcd and thomas nelson um and and some other schools and yeah shout out to will tonight on the neela shout out to kill Aquary on or tyler on the trundle in the game one Shout out to the rest of the uh, players for Lafayette. It's been a long season. It's felt like a long season, even though it's only been a couple, you know, seven games. But they they played well. So uh, really excited for the playoffs. The playoffs will be the first week back after Thanksgiving break. So there's nothing next week at all. And then the week after that playoff starts. So it's going to be a quick turnaround after a, a holiday break. So be sure to catch all of that. Uh, we'll try to stream all the games. Can't promise uh, we'll get all of them done because it's going to be like a weird schedule that uh, is pretty quick. So I apologize if we don't get them all done. But yeah, have a good night, y'all.